it's National Women's Health Week, so right now the women are asking and the women are answering. <laughs> Joining us is Women's Health Magazine's fitness director, Jen Ader. Thank Hi, you. Jen. So tell us about Women's Health Week. Yeah, what so every year we've partnered with the doctors and the Office on Women's Health, and it's just all about empowering women to give them the tools and the confidence to live their best life and be healthy and take action, <laughs> you know, and be healthy, happy, and confident. I love that. Yes. It's such a message of assertiveness. Yeah. You know, take your health into your own hands. Right. Don't be afraid to ask questions, no matter how weird they seem or, or embarrassing. how embarrassing they might be. Exactly. There's a, we all share a lot in common at the end of the day, so nothing's really too embarrassing embarrassing to ask. And I love that it starts every year in May on Mother's Day, exactly. so you know yes, that's very appropriate. So. Just a gentle reminder, because so sometimes as women, we'll take care of everybody else, and then you have to stop and think to yourself, who's taking care of me? Mm -hmm. So you ladies ready to get started? Absolutely. Yeah, Let's get it. started. Let's get to the questions. Here's one we received via Snapchat. So I'm interested in therapy, but I don't know how I feel about sitting down with someone I barely know and telling them all my life problems. Any ideas on how to make this a little bit easier? Thoughts? Yeah, so walk and talk therapy, definitely a thing, definitely helpful for certain people. And I actually do this with my patients. Really? Um, some of them really respond well to it, especially ones who might be a little shy. So a lot of extreme anxiety can interfere with the emotional bond that you have to build with your therapist in session. Sometimes kids who are very active, like ADHD type behaviors, they really just respond well. And actually I've also found that sometimes it helps with patients who have a lot of trauma because when somebody's been through trauma, they really build those walls up. And so when you do the walk and talk therapy, people are on an even plane. You're walking side by side, it's a great metaphor. And you get to incorporate some level of exercise into it. It's just another chance to have some good modeling for your patients. Well, there is something incredibly healing about the act of forward motion. You know, it gives you yeah. kind of time and space to process. And uh, so whether you're doing it on your own or with a therapist, it's, there's something very calming and very mm. positive about moving forward. And I think that that's, like you said, combined with the actual exercise benefits, you know, research shows that even little bouts of exercise yeah. reduces anxiety, improves mood, and that lingers afterwards. So yeah. you're just boosting whatever benefit you're also getting from the therapy session. And it works not in therapy sessions either. I mean, going out with my friends, I've had some of the most like deep conversations, that is life therapy, and life right? changing yeah. moments from a long run or a hike or just a walk around a park. Like there is something very disarming and vulnerable about just walking with somebody. You're not looking at them all the time. It's not that like face to face yes. that can make you kind of timid to say something. And it's a really, it's a great way to strengthen bonds or work through things as you're also getting some workout. I like that. So it will leave you feeling good and looking good. Mm -hmm. yes. Hashtag <laughs> That's the plan, right? <laughs> All right, what woman doesn't want that? 